Good morning. Uh, so great for us so again to be able to study God's word together. The use of technology is amazing and it just again allows us to be able to connect even though we are somewhat disconnected at this time. Uh, but uh, as we've been going through this this great chapter, Romans chapter 8, um, I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's it's so much highlighting the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers. And so we know that the Holy Spirit is not some random force. He's not God's abstract power to, to bring about His purposes and His will. But rather, He's God Himself. He's the third person of the Trinity. And there are few places in Scripture that are as rich um, in, as to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers, as we are being conformed to the image of Christ, more so yeah, uh, than yeah in Romans chapter 8. And uh, we also, we're going to look at Romans 8 verse 26 and 27 this morning, and we see even in our praying how the Holy Spirit is working through us there. And uh, let's read together Romans 8 verse 26 and verse 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will, with the will of God. And so we, we can see that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. You see, Paul has been laboring from verse 18 to verse 25 about how we are subject to to the, the fallen nature, how we are subject to um, this, this uh, along with the rest of creation, to this fallen state that we find ourselves in. Um, we are, our, our suffering is put into a global context. We are not somehow immune from suffering uh, just because we are born again, just because we are Christ followers. But rather, uh, these uh, sufferings uh, tend to uh, lead us to groan inwardly. We, we eagerly await our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. And so our bodies are in a weakened state. And because of this, we need help. And the good news again is that the Holy Spirit does help us in our weaknesses. What Paul has been telling us that we can wait patiently. He is telling us also that we can, we have a help in our time of weaknesses. And uh, the Holy Spirit, yes, yeah, specifically is helping us as we pray. We see that our, our weaknesses also um, lend themselves to our ignorance. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the, but the hope that we have is that the Holy Spirit always knows what to pray for. While we are weak, He is not weak. He is God. While we are subject to the fallen nature, He is not subject to it. While we are ignorant, He is not ignorant. He always prays in accordance with the will of God. And, uh, and that is how He is helping us. He is interceding for us. He is interceding on our behalf so that the perfect will of God Will be done in our lives and so um, we we know that there are many places in scripture where we are commanded what to pray for we are commanded how we ought to pray what we should pray for we we know that we should be praying for for our government for those those in leadership that we might lead quiet and peaceable lives we know that we are called to pray for uh, unbelievers that god would open their eyes that they might come to a knowledge of jesus christ and we know that we are called to pray for uh, the, the 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 pray to the Lord of the harvest that He would send out laborers into the harvest field because the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And uh, so there are many places where we know what to pray for. But yeah, we see that we do not know always know how we ought to pray, and it's because of our weaknesses. And I think again, the context that Paul is talking into here is specifically the context of suffering. It's as we are. In the state of suffering, in the state of persecution, in the state of trial and testing, that actually in those times we do not know how we always ought to pray. If you look at the Apostle Paul himself um, in, in the book of Acts as he's unpacking his missionary journeys, there are times when he, he gets up in, in the face of great persecution and faces it head on. There are other times when he is uh, let down through a hole in the wall to escape under the cover of darkness. There are times when he pursues uh, uh, every missionary angle that he can. And there are other times when he acknowledges that the Holy Spirit um, is closing doors and not opening doors for them to be able to go and preach in certain areas. And so in these times, uh, we do not know how we ought to pray. We do not know if we should be praying for uh, endurance in our suffering or if we should be praying for deliverance 
from our suffering. Again, Paul himself prays in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 with the, the famous passage of scripture on his thorn in the flesh. He says, three times I prayed for God to take it away from me. But the answer he got from God is, no, but my grace is sufficient for you. And so are we called to pray for deliverance from these sufferings or are we called to pray for endurance, for to be able to suffer well, for patience, for perseverance. I think about even this, these uh, persecutions and these, these things that we're going through now under this, this lockdown. Um, our businesses are suffering, the economy, our lives are being threatened, our, our livelihoods are being threatened. And again, what do we pray? How do we pray? And this leads us to this, again, this groaning. We're subjected to, to weaknesses and futility and we look at everything around us and we're going, God, how do we pray? God, do we pray that you take this virus away as quickly as possible? Or do we pray again, Lord God, that you would give us perseverance to, to get through it and to get through it stronger, to get through it more in love with you, to do good while we are in the state of suffering. And I think both are equally good to pray. Because you see, the good news is, is that even when we do not know what to pray, yeah, we see the Holy Spirit is praying on our behalf. And He is praying um, in the perfect accordance with the will of God. And when God the Father searches our hearts, as we are the ones who are praying, as we are the ones who are groaning inwardly, as we are the ones that are, are crying out to God for, for uh, the way forward, actually the Holy Spirit is the one who is interceding on our behalf. And God sees the work of the Holy Spirit and He performs everything according to His purpose and according to His will. And that's amazing because that's why it goes straight from there into verse 28 that, that Sean's going to unpack for us in our, in our next installment. Um, about them. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. Because why? Because it's the Holy Spirit who's interceding on our behalf. God sees the Holy Spirit's intercession on our behalf and He answers in accordance with His will and in accordance with the Holy Spirit's prayers. And so be encouraged this morning is that even when we feel helpless, acknowledge we are helpless, we are weak, we are fallen, but we have a great helper, a great comforter, the Holy Spirit, God himself, who's praying on our behalf. And he will act in accordance with his will. And his will is to do us good. And a good, again, that makes us look more like him. A good that brings him the most glory. And so be encouraged this morning. Keep your eyes fixed on him. Turn to him. Trust him. Rely on him in all we do. Amen.